Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I haven't done any recent videos on On One Photo Raw 2022, so I thought today I'd demonstrate how I convert and process an image into black and white using On One Photo Raw 2022 because I do it slightly differently than most. Now we're going to work on this image. It isn't processed at all. I'm going to click on Reset All just to make sure. Now, the first thing I do before I do anything is I reduce noise in the image. Now, this specific image was shot with the Nikon Z7 II. ISO was 64. There really isn't any significant noise in the image, but for this demonstration, I'll show you what I do is I reduce noise first. I'll go right to Noise and Sharpening, and I'll click on No Noise AI. And when you do that, it will take a second, and it will reduce the noise in the image. And right off the bat, it usually does a fine job. You could move this slider across and see a before after. You could come in and try to readjust things, maybe add some sharpening if you want, but typically I don't. I just take the default settings and then I click apply. And then I click on the image to zoom it back out and I'm done. I reduce noise. The next thing I do is I crop the image. Now, I don't think this image needs to be cropped, but it is slightly crooked, so I want to straighten it. So I'm gonna to go to the crop tool and then I'm going to go off the image to the right just a little bit and I'll get this circular arrow and then I'll click and I'll just drag up in this case to straighten it. I like to straighten the images this way, just by eye. That's the way I prefer to do it. And that looks pretty good. I'll go up to the top and I'll click apply. Now, most often most people would start adjusting tone at this point. I don't like to do that. And as a matter of fact, I won't even use the tone and color in the develop module at all. I jump right to the effects module and I add a black and white filter right now. So I'm going to convert it to black and white early in my workflow. And after I do convert it to black and white, I don't move any sliders at all. I don't do anything at this point. So I just convert it to black and white. Now I adjust tone. Now I could go inside of the black and white filter. There is tone adjustments here, but I don't like to use these tone adjustments. I prefer to add an individual uh, tone filter. So I'll go up to add filter and we'll go to the tone enhancer filter. The reason why I like to add a filter all by itself is it has a mask with it and I'd be able to mask out any adjustment or mask in the adjustment where I want it. In this case, I don't think I would need to do that but I like that option. So that's why I use an individual tone enhancer filter and not use the tone controls that are inside the black and white filter. Hopefully that made sense. So what I'm going to do is I'll bring highlights down a touch and then I'm going to open up the shadows a touch and then I'm going to adjust the whites and blacks. And to get a white point, what I'll do is I'll hold in the J key. And as soon as I hold in the J key, you'll notice I get a blue overlay uh, on the darker areas, that blue is indicating that I'm crushing the shadows there, the blacks there. So it's absolute black. If you saw any red on the image, that means I'm blowing out the highlights. And when I adjust that white slider to the right, you'll see eventually some red comes in. So I'm starting to blow out those highlights. Just hold the J key in the entire time while you do this. Now I'm going to reduce it. I don't like to blow out highlights at all. So I'm going to just reduce this until all that red is gone, which appears to be at number one. So it's barely an adjustment. Um, I don't mind crushing the shadows or clipping the blacks that much. So when I hold in the J key, you can see I already have some of those clipped. Um, I'll move the black slider to left and just maybe make them a little darker. And that's it. And that's really pretty much all I do with tone. I don't add any contrast. I will adjust exposure if it needs it. So if I underexpose the image or I overexpose the image, I would adjust exposure. But in this case, I have a good exposure on the image, so I don't need to move that. And I almost never move the contrast slider. I usually like to get my contrast using the highlight shadows, whites and blacks, like I just did. So I'm really done with the tone enhancer filter. Now what I'll do is I'll jump back to that black and white filter and I'll adjust my black and white mix, 
and that is you adjust these sliders here. And what I'll do is when I have a landscape image with a sky in it, like this image, I'll jump right to aqua and to blue, and I'll move those down just to make the sky darker. That's what I usually like to do. And then in this case, the yellow will probably affect the rocks and the, um, and the lighthouse. So I'm going to move those to the right and make that brighter. And red, let's see. Red's just affecting these kind of signs off here. I don't know if you could see it in the video. I'll make those brighter. So it's affecting the water scooter a little bit as well. And magenta is probably not going to do anything, and it isn't. So that's that. So I like it so far. And if I, you know, every now and then I'll experiment with some of the presets across the top, uh, the green filter, yellow filter, red filter, the infrared filter, go to the drop down. You can see there's a lot more there. If you just hover over them, you'll see you get the effects. Now, I, I don't think I, this image I want to use those, so I just bypass those right away. Next, I'll add another filter. I'm going to add the dynamic contrast filter. Um, I've mentioned this several times. This is one of my favorite filters in on one photo raw it just adds so much to the image right off the you know bat there's before there's after now i am going to move it ahead or in front of the tone enhancer uh, filter so it's at the top so there's before there's after it really didn't make a difference um right off the bat what it does it adds this natural preset even though the natural preset isn't turned on that's what it is if i click on it you can see there's no change in the sliders that's what it does as soon as you add it it adds that now you could try some of the others i don't like any of those you could go to here and try to do some it's adding some weird effects to the water i'll just stay with the natural um as a matter of fact maybe i'll bring it down just a little bit it's a little bit over the top Maybe just kind of readjust these uh, three sliders at the top a little bit. It has some tone adjustments as well. I could touch up tone if I wanted to, but I don't think I need to. I kind of like it like that. There's before and there's after. Maybe I could tweak medium up just a touch more. Now, there are some occasions where I only want to apply the dynamic contrast to the sky. If that case, then I would open up the masking tools and I would get a brush and brush in the adjustment or, uh, you know, so it's only on the sky or brush it away from where I don't want it. In this case, I really don't need to do that. So I think it's fine. And I do have videos where I demonstrate how to use the filter masks in on one. I'll have them link, linked in the description below this video if you want to uh, check out how to use filter masks in on one and i will do it again in a future video now actually i think i'm almost done so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to add filter and i'm going to add a vignette and what i like to do when i add a vignette is i just go across with the preset so i'll look at the subtle vignette strong vignette i want to look at one that is either exactly what i want or at least close to what i want the strong vignette is close big softy is kind of close there's edges. I could go to the drop down and just hover over these, and you can see that there's different vignette presets. Now I'm going to go with Big Softy, but I don't like it as is. I'm going to adjust it from this point. It's too much into the middle of the image. So I'm going to go to size and I'm going to move this to the right and pull it away from the middle. So it's more on just the edges. And I could affect brightness a little bit as well. I want it more subtle, I guess is the way I'm, instead of using the subtle vignette or subtle preset, I want to use Big Softy and make it subtle myself. There is before, there's after, maybe bring brightness down, before, after, yeah, bring brightness all the way down, before, after, maybe make it a little more towards the middle, before, after, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. So that's how I go about um, converting and processing an image in black and white. Now what's significant about the way I do it is all I do in the develop module is beside lens corrections is a no noise AI. That's all I do. I don't do anything else there. All of my work or most of my work is done with effects. So hopefully that helps you use On One Photo Raw 2022. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. 
I'll talk to you guys soon.